Hello, today's account comes from Evesham from Mr Roberts and Mr Roberts said I'm about to tell you of my experience that happened to me around the age of 14 to 15 years old. I'm not too sure as it was an experience that I've tried to put out of my mind but failed miserably to do, making me seek information over 20 years later. And this is what happened. Late one dark night I was walking the usual route I would walk my way home. It was about 10 or 11 o'clock at night and to be honest I had quite a lot of freedom back then. I could come and go as I pleased. Anyway, on this route I had to pass a small area of disused and very overgrown land. Thickets of brambles, trees, bushes and overgrown grass etc. Which always gave me the creeps at this time of night. Seeing as the area was on the right hand side of the road, it always made me veer off to the left. And as I made my way to the opposite footpath, out of the corner of my eye, I could see a large bulk directly beneath the lamppost. To my astonishment and disbelief, I saw what seemed to be an animal of some sort. It had rugged hair all over it, and I could see its body kind of rising up and down to the motion of someone breathing, and that seemed really odd. What seemed even odder was that my eyes were not quite believing what they were seeing and also raising my curiosity was the fact that this creature appeared to be standing on its hind legs and was standing about a little over a metre tall, not large at all for a Bigfoot, Yeti or any animal really, with its back towards me but I just couldn't figure out how this animal was stood upright so easily at which point I started to quietly approach, thinking that my eyes really must be deceiving me and kind of hoping it to be some kind of rug that somebody had left out and wanting to bunk, debunk any silly ideas that I was getting into my head. I figured I'd better go over and have a look. Originally, I must have been about 30 metres away and I start, as I advance towards the figure, I'm still questioning the whole way with my heart beating faster and faster the closer I became. My mind was racing, realising this was no dog, no rug, and certainly couldn't be a small child in some kind of Halloween costume. It wasn't that time of year. Whatever it was, it was definitely an alive animal that stood easily on its hind legs like a human. As I came up close to the small figure, I started to hear its breathing and a kind of snuffling that was recognisable at this point and I was very, very close, around about four or five metres away at this point. As my mind raced, all I could see and hear was as clear as day being directly beneath the lamppost. It was well lit up, but I was still finding it difficult for my mind to take in as right before me was this strange creature. And what seemed even more crazy was the fact that it actually appeared to be crying. It was sulking, exactly like you, like you might expect a small child to do. I could see, as I was really close, that it ha actually had its arm upwards with its forearm against its forehead and with its body tipped towards a lamppost, using it to lean against or even hide its head or face in the exact same way small children do. Its body juddered up and down, Quickly, with every snorting, snuffling sound it was creating, again the same way a small child might do. My mind was astounded, almost in shock as I stood there for what seemed like an eternity, but was probably just a matter of seconds really. As my brain started to catch up with itself, I started to imagine what its face might look like and what its reaction might be if it were to catch me standing so close. At this point, complete fear had started to take over and all I could picture in my mind at this point was that it would have teeth as large and as pointy as a dog's teeth and that it would probably wouldn't take too kindly to having me accidentally sneak up upon it. I could imagine it turning to face me, getting angry and most likely to attack me. Of course my mind had begun to run away with itself beyond all control. I hadn't actually seen a face or teeth. But I really did not like being that close, just in case. To which my feet started backing off, extremely quietly, not daring to make any sound. I didn't even dare to breathe. 
I was concentrating so hard not to exhale loudly, although I swear it could have heard my heart pumping away so hard in my chest that I could feel it almost make my head pulse. Fearing it would turn around with every backward step I took, placing my feet with very direct, careful placements, trying not to accidentally scuff or make any noise. I dared not take my wide open eyes off it, not even for a second, until I had met with my original path home, at which point I slowly disappeared around the corner and out of its direct view. I still didn't make, dare make any noise, and quite literally sneaking the rest of the way, I carefully began my short walk home. <sighs> Even when I'd gotten home, I carefully shut the front door, still not wanting to make any noise, still stricken with fear. I carefully shut the front door, still not wanting to, it to come near me. I didn't want to attract its attention in any way. Now, all these years later, I'm a much more scientific-minded person, even to this day. But I cannot deny what my eyes and my other senses had experienced that night. Whether it was the longish brown fur, which I remember seeing it kind of move. I remember seeing its outline of its body, its legs, and curiously its arm positions. My mind still, even to this day, finds it hard to believe that whatever this thing was, it had expressed signs of a human emotion. It actually was crying. Its whole body language told me that, even the noises that it had created. Only this was definitely no child, and to my knowledge, no monkey. Its shape and stature was completely different. It seemed to close resemble a small child, but much bulkier and hairy. In a way, at times, I wish I hadn't seen it, and I don't want anybody to ever think that I may create a tale like this, as I despise anybody that would. Don't get me wrong, I've seen my fair share of strange goings on, but all could be explained rationally to have been created by some natural or man-made means, but not this. I know what I had seen that night was no trickery of any sort, and that I would never be able to prove my story, at least not until some kind of evidence is found. I await that day with the knowledge that I know something is out there, whether it be an alien, which I doubt to be honest, Bigfoot or whatever it is. It is some kind of creature that has been able to hide from man for many years. But the fact remains, I know it is out there somewhere. And to this day and in the future, I will never forget what I had experienced that night in question. That's, a, that's an amazing account, isn't it? I mean, to come across something like that, a small... A very small one crying. It's been a couple of years ago now since uh, myself and the witness spoke in depth about that day. But he's around and I know he's still listening. And this is one of the accounts that is dear to my heart and quite important, I think. I can understand how he felt and still feels to this day. The confusion on seeing something that cannot be real is not a nice place to be. Well, there are many people in the UK who share that feeling with Mr Roberts and I think of him and the others often wondering how they are now and what they're doing and did coming forward and sharing help them with a difficult struggle. I hope so. I hope it did. This account is also important as it shows that even the smallest of things, if unknown to us, becomes a monster in our minds without too much effort. When you break the account down, this was a small figure, maybe even a very young one, that was clearly in distress. This account is a few short steps from the River Avon, and it's thickly covered banks. Maybe this young one took the wrong turn, and hid the way small toddlers do. If I can't see you, you can't see me. I certainly hope Mum and Dad were very close by, and just waiting for the young Mr Roberts to depart. But it's a very good example of how, with even a small, harmless toddler, knowledge and not knowing what it is can incite panic in us humans. And it does, it just goes to show you, doesn't it? Yeah, that if that little figure hadn't been hairy, yeah, they wouldn't, he wouldn't have seen it as frightening. He would have gone over and he would have helped it thinking it was a child that was lost. And it's just that difference between us and them. You know, the bigger 
and the hairier. But that doesn't make them monsters. And I hope you take that thought with you when you go out to the woods or out and about anywhere enjoying the day. And I'm glad I've been able to bring this account to you. And if you're out there, Mr Roberts, I'm thinking about you. Until next time, goodbye.